Hey everybody and welcome to the deep dive. We're diving into a research paper today all about pathrag. Pathrag. Yeah. So interesting stuff. It's a uh, new approach to re retrieval augmented generation. Right. Rag. Rag, exactly. Um, I think most of our listeners are probably pretty familiar with rag at this point, but you know, just in case. Yeah. Just a quick recap. Yeah. So rag is a technique that makes large language models even better by letting them access all this outside information. Like external databases. Exactly. Think of it like giving an LLM. A big old research library. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Giving them a research library to work with. Exactly. To get more accurate and relevant information. Exactly. So what's the big problem that this pathrag is trying to solve? Well, the thing is... Like, what's the issue with just regular RAG? Yeah. So, like, with current graph-based RAG methods... Like graph RAG and all those... Yeah, graph RAG, light RAG, all those... They sometimes end up, you know, pulling in way too much information. Too much of a good thing. Yeah. It's like you're looking for a specific recipe online and you get like a million results, but most of them are totally irrelevant. Oh, so it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. That's a good way to put it. And Pathrag, that's where this comes in. Pathrag tries to solve that problem. So this Pathrag is like a super filter for LLMs. You could say that. Okay, so tell me. It basically zeroes in on the most relevant stuff. Okay. It focuses on what we call relational paths within a knowledge graph. So instead of just like... Instead of just like giving the LLM a whole bunch of random facts, it's like, hey, look at these connections between the facts, you know? Also, it provides like context. Context makes yeah. the information way more useful. That makes a lot of sense. So how does this actually work? How does Pathrag do its thing? Well, it's kind of like a three-step process. Three stages. Yeah, three stages. First, it analyzes the question, extracts keywords, and then uses those keywords to find relevant nodes in the knowledge graph. So it's like using keywords to search for a book in a library catalog. Yeah, it's like narrowing down your search to a specific section. Okay, what's step two? So in step two, Pathrag does something pretty clever. Mm. It uses an algorithm to figure out the most important connections between those nodes. Oh, so it's like creating a roadmap. Yeah. Imagine you're planning a road trip. Okay. You have this big map with all these different routes. Yeah. Well, the algorithm is like your GPS picking out the best route, avoiding all the traffic jams and unnecessary detours. So instead of giving the LLM a bunch of random paths, it highlights the most direct and informative ones. Exactly. And this is where the idea of flow-based pruning comes in. Flow-based pruning. That sounds intense. It's not as scary as it sounds. Think about it like this. You're searching for a recipe online, right? Sure. Flow-based pruning is like a filter that prioritizes websites with, you know, high-quality recipes, lots of good reviews. So it weeds out the less relevant ones. Exactly. Helps you find the most reliable sources of information. Oh, okay. That's really clever. So <laughs> what about the final stage? What happens in stage three? That's where the LLM actually steps up and generates an answer. Based on all that filtered info. Yeah, based on all that carefully curated information. But don't LLMs sometimes get, like, overwhelmed? Oh, yeah, totally. It's like if you tried to remember a long grocery list without writing it down. You'd probably forget some things. Exactly. And Pathrag addresses that by organizing the information in a really smart way. Makes it easier for the LLM to digest. Yeah. Pathrag actually puts the most reliable information at the very beginning and the very end. So it's like a well-structured cheat sheet. That's a great way to think about it. This way, the LLM is more likely to remember those key details and give you a more accurate and coherent answer. Okay, so Pathrag sounds super elegant. Yeah. Like it's really addressing this problem of information overload head on. For sure. But did it actually work? Did the researchers actually test this thing out? Oh, they did. Right. And the results were impressive. Spill the tea. Tell me more. They tested Pathrag on six data sets from all sorts of different fields, like law, history, right. even biology. Wow. So they really put it through his paces. Oh, yeah. They wanted to see how it handled all kinds of different questions. Okay. And it consistently outperformed all the other RRAG methods they tested it against. Seriously? Yeah. It's the real deal. And what's really interesting is that it actually did even better on the bigger, more complex data sets. Oh, wow. So it can handle, like, real-world data. Exactly. It's not just a theoretical thing. It actually works. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. But let's be realistic for a sec. Sure. Using LLMs for this kind of stuff can get really expensive computationally. Oh, yeah. The token cost. Yeah. Did Pathrag actually save any processing power? It did. It was way more efficient in terms of token usage. So remind me again, what are tokens exactly? Tokens are like the units of information that LLMs process. Okay. And the more tokens you use, the more it costs to run the LLM. Right, right. So fewer tokens equals lower costs. Right. And even a lighter version of Pathrag. There's a lighter oh, version? Yeah. 
Yeah, they call it path ragtalt. It achieves basically the same performance as the best existing methods, but using way fewer tokens. So you're saying it's more accurate and cheaper? That's what the research shows. That's incredible. Can you quantify that at all? Like, how much more efficient was it? On average, PathRag used like 16% fewer tokens than the best existing method. 16%. That's pretty good. But PathRag ragged was even better, like 44% reduction in tokens. 44%. That's huge. Yeah. It's a game changer for using LLMs with knowledge graphs. Wow. This PathRag really does sound like the real deal. It's pretty amazing technology. All right, well, we've got to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more on PathRag, so don't go anywhere. Stick around. All right, so we just learned that PathRag is more accurate and also more efficient. Way more efficient. But, like, how does it actually work in practice? Yeah, good question. Can you give me, like, some specific examples? Sure. Let's say you're uh, you're working on, like, a legal case, something about copyright law. And you need to figure out what it means to use something that's copyrighted without getting permission first. Right. Pretty common scenario. Yeah, so... PathRag would start by zeroing in on those key words. Like copyright and uh, permission. Exactly. Copyright, permission, implications, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then it would use those keywords as like a starting point to navigate that whole knowledge graph of legal terms. So it's like building a legal argument. Yeah. It's identifying those most relevant connections between yeah. all those different concepts. So it might find a path that shows you know, copyright law gives these exclusive rights to the creator. Right. And then how using their work without permission is like infringement. That makes sense. And then what are the penalties for infringement? So it's really connecting the dots. Yeah. It's not just pulling random facts out of thin air. It's like building a logical chain of reasoning. I see. I see. So what about a more complex example, like something from history? Okay. Yeah. Like what if I wanted to understand like the key events that led to the fall of the Roman Empire? Uh, That's a good one. So many factors involved there. Right. Like, where would you even begin with something like that? Well, PathRag would start by picking up those keynotes. Okay. Roman Empire, fall, key events. And then it traces paths through the knowledge graph, connecting all those concepts in a way that makes sense. Like, it might find a path that connects, you know, the rise of Christianity right. to the weakening of traditional Roman values. Interesting. Or another path might link like economic decline to all those barbarian invasions. Oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. And then another path could connect political instability to the eventual collapse of the empire. So it's like weaving together this historical narrative. Exactly. It's helping you see how all these different events and ideas are interconnected. Like you're getting the big picture. Exactly. And it's doing all of this without actually understanding history you know yeah. it's just following the connections within the knowledge graph that is so cool okay so we've talked about how pathreg could be useful in like legal research and historical analysis but what about other fields like where else could this be applied oh man the possibilities are pretty much endless okay well, give me some examples okay so let's think about education for a second imagine a student trying to learn about photosynthesis Oh. They're having trouble understanding how it all works. Like all those different concepts. Right. A system powered by PathRag could guide them through this knowledge graph of biology, showing them those clear connections between light energy and chlorophyll and carbon dioxide. You know. So it's like a personalized tutor. Yeah. Helping them navigate all that complex information. That's awesome. And this kind of personalized learning experience could go way beyond science, too. You know, PathRag could help students understand literature, history, even math. Wow. So like textbooks could become way more interactive. Right. They could be dynamic and interconnected and students could explore concepts in a way that really makes sense to them. That would be a game changer for education. Totally. Okay. Now let's switch gears and think about journalism. Okay. Like investigative journalism reporters often have to sift through tons and tons of data to figure out what's really going on. Oh yeah. Like tracing the flow of money or finding hidden connections between people. Exactly. PathRag could be an incredibly powerful tool for that kind of investigation. So it's like giving investigative journalists superpowers. Pretty much. It could also help them with fact-checking, you know, making sure their reporting is accurate and well-sourced. That's super important these days. For sure. Okay, so we've talked about law, education, journalism. What else? Yeah. What other fields could PathRag disrupt? Mm, well, healthcare is a big one. Healthcare, okay. Think about a doctor trying to diagnose a patient with a really rare disease. Oh, yeah, that's tricky. PathRag could help them navigate through this 
massive knowledge graph of medical literature connecting all these different things like symptoms, genetic markers, potential treatments. It's like having a medical expert at your fingertips. Exactly. And it could revolutionize how we approach diagnosis and treatment. This is blowing my mind. Huh? What else What else could Pathrag do in uh, healthcare? Well, well, we could even see it being used for drug discovery, mm -hmm. you know? Helping researchers identify new drug targets or predict potential side effects. Wow, so the applications are literally endless. Pretty much. Okay, so we've talked about a lot of exciting possibilities here, but I know you mentioned earlier that there are also some potential challenges with Pathrag. Oh, yeah, for sure. So what are some of the hurdles we might encounter <laughs> as we start implementing systems like this? So we've talked about all these amazing things that Pathrag could potentially do. Yeah, it's really exciting stuff. But, you know, like every new technology has its challenges. For sure. And Pathrag is, is no exception, right? Right. What are some things we need to be mindful of as we start actually, like, implementing these systems? Well, I think one of the biggest things is making sure that Pathrag is used responsibly. Responsibly, yeah. Like any tool it can be used for good or for bad. Uh, and it's really important to think about those potential downsides, you know? Absolutely. So what are some specific things that we need to watch out for? Well, one thing that comes to mind is the potential for misuse. Misuse, okay. Like imagine someone using Pathrag to like manipulate information or spread misinformation. Oh yeah. They could like carefully select certain keywords. I see. Or even try to manipulate the knowledge graph itself to push a certain agenda. So it's kind of like manipulating search results to promote certain websites. Yeah, exactly. It's not the tool itself that's bad. Right. It's how people choose to use it. It's the human element. Exactly. Yeah. So it's really important to be aware of these risks and to develop safeguards to prevent that kind of misuse, you know. Yeah, like what kind of safeguards? Well, for example, we could have systems that track how Pathrag is being used. Oh, okay. And flag any suspicious activity. So it's like having a security camera on the system. Yeah. Yeah. Making sure no one's tampering with it or using it for, like, malicious purposes. Yeah, that's a great idea. Are there any other challenges that we need to think about? Um, yeah, uh, another big one is accessibility. Accessibility, okay. Right now, using a system like Pathrag requires a certain level of technical expertise. Right. And not everyone has those skills or resources. That's true. So if we want Pathrag to be truly impactful, we need to make it accessible to a wider range of people. Yeah, like, how do we do that? Well, we need to develop more user-friendly interfaces and tools okay. that make it easier for people who aren't, you know, super technical to use and benefit from Pathrag. So it's kind of like how drag and drop interfaces made it easier for people to build websites. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It empowers more people to use the technology. I love that analogy. Okay, so making it more user-friendly is super important. Are there any other potential hurdles that we might encounter? Yeah, one more thing to consider is the potential impact on jobs. Jobs, okay. Some people are worried that technologies like Pathrag could automate tasks that are currently being done by humans. Oh, yeah, that's a valid concern. And that could lead to job displacement. Yeah, I mean, it's similar to how automation in factories led to job losses for some workers, but it also created new opportunities in other areas. Right, right? exactly. So instead of being afraid of job displacement, we should focus on how we can adapt and evolve alongside these new technologies. So it's about figuring out how to navigate the changes and make sure everyone benefits. Right. Like we need to identify those new skills and job roles that are going to be in demand as Pathrag and other AI powered systems become more common. So it's not about stopping progress. It's about adapting to it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the key is to approach these technologies with a sense of curiosity and collaboration. You know, curiosity and collaboration. I love that. We need to have those open and honest conversations about the potential benefits and the risks. Absolutely. And work together to create a future where Pathrag empowers us all. That's a great point. So as we wrap up our deep dive <laughs> into Pathrag, what's the main takeaway that you want to leave our listeners with? Well, I think the most important thing to remember is that Pathrag is a tool. A tool? Okay. It's a powerful tool with the potential to revolutionize a lot of different fields, but it's ultimately up to us to use it wisely and responsibly. That's a great reminder. We need to be mindful of the potential challenges, but also embrace the possibilities and work together to shape the future of these technologies. Couldn't have said it better myself. It's an exciting time to be involved in this field, you know? We're just scratching the surface of what's possible with Pathrag and other AI systems. Well, that brings us to the end of our deep dive into Pathrag. It's been a fascinating journey. I've learned so much, and I'm sure our listeners have too. 
So to all our listeners out there, thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive. We hope you've enjoyed exploring the world of Pathrag with us. And until next time, keep seeking knowledge and asking those big questions. Stay curious.